just the cannon. Yeah, I tried to just flick the pink out away and leave the red yeah. into the, the opposite corner, so just missed the cannon. I don't think he's taking this red on. I think he's just bringing it into play and playing a safety shot. Try and put the white. Well, I, I can't believe he's played that. Not the percentage shot, even for him. No, it certainly wasn't, Clive. Very, very difficult shot. If it was the last red, you may say, yeah. But because this red was on into the middle pocket, he knew he'd be leaving should he miss. Even if the, the red he was going for was going to go safe, but... Uh, a, bit, a little bit surprised there with Stephen. Maybe just saw the winning line a little bit early. A touch of impatience, maybe. Robertson's still got to pop this pink to secure the frame, barring a snooker. So we're going to see another frame for sure. Andrew was a funny mixture in this frame, wasn't he? Ken? Conservative shot choice when he had an outside chance of a maximum, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a very daring. Well even reckless attempt at the penultimate red. I think he was just frustrated that he missed the, the cannon on the pink to bring the, the second last red into play and I think he's just got a little bit frustrated well, himself and said I'll just go for it. <laughs> anyway, that frame enables Neil Robertson to reduce Stephen Hendry's lead to 9-4 at the it's magician quite interval. Possible, please. Former world champion John Parrott's watching that game. Steam would rather have got that sorted out before the interval, but well done Neil Robertson, eh? Well done, but the second last red Stephen's taken down the cushion. I mean, Ken said on commentary, you saw the winning post, he was just desperate to get over the line there. He probably didn't want to have to go and have a, a mid-session interval there, but, because there was no percentage in that shot. I mean, I know he's not loads of them in, but to play that shot the way he did and then leave the one in the middle, um, you could see there's a little bit of impetuous there. Stephen's going to go through, but well done Neil, what are your impressions of him? He's done well. I mean, we see him in the qualifiers. I mean, with me having to qualify these days, I see a lot of him, and he, he plays very, very well. Excellent long potter. It's a big task going out there first time the Crucible. People don't really know what it's like, and, then, and when they go out and experience the first time, they're always better for coming back the next time. Stephen Hendry is relentless. He's just never satisfied, is he? His motivation is the thing that, that, that astounds me, right? To keep going year in, year out, and play as well as he does. Okay, the World Championships are different, but nevertheless, to have that appetite is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, that's it. Time to go, but not for very long. Uh, live coverage continues over on BBC I, of course. We're back here on BBC Two in an hour. There's both matches. See you later. Goodbye.
Welcome back to the Crucible. That's the famous face of Stephen Hendry, the seven times winner of this Embassy World Snooker Championship. But he's making heavy weather of what we thought would be a routine first round victory over Australian Neil Robertson. Overnight, he led 7-2. The first four frames when the match resumed were shared. That made it 9-4. 9-4's gone to 9-6. This isn't what Stephen Hendry had planned for today. Into frame 16 with commentary by Clive Everton and Ken Doherty. Oh, just getting a little nervy out there now. Well, you can't turn it on just when you feel like it. One. And uh, Hendry has rather let it slip from his commanding position of 9-3. Still a very heavy favourite, of course. But... Uh, Six. He's got to get something together sooner or later. Seven. Mm -hmm. 